Hi, I'm Dennis DiCicco for Sky and Telescope Magazine here at the 2016 Northeast Astronomy Forum, NEEF. Uh, right now, I'm over at the Astrophysics booth. It seems that every one of these shows, there's always some piece of equipment that generates a huge amount of buzz, and no matter where you are, somebody will say, hey, have you seen what's over there? And in this case, it's been at Astrophysics. And I'm speaking right now with Roland Christen, the founder and president of Astrophysics. And I want you to tell me a little bit more about the scope behind me here that's generated so much buzz. Okay. okay. All right, let's go. Okay, let me tell you a few things about this telescope and how it got to be. All right. We go to shows two, three times a year. So for our largest mount, we need to show a telescope on it that is suitable, for the, mount. suitable for the mount. Right. right. This is the 1600. Yes. This has a capacity of? 220 pounds. All right, so you needed a big scope. Plus, it has a, the ability to hold a long focus telescope, something around three to 4,000 millimeters for astro imaging. And that's the whole purpose of the mount. Okay. So. Two, a couple years ago, I built this 17-inch telescope in order to test our mounts in our observatory at Astrophysics. And it's a, basically a test bed. And right. so what you see here is kind of a uh, stripped-down version. It doesn't have a lot of baffling or anything like that. Right. Is this a Roland design? Yes. So it's a 17-inch F? F8 flat field cassegrain. So you've got two mirrors. And a corrector near the focus? Yes, a field flattener, corrector, coma corrector, combination at the focus. All right, you've designed this for the big CCDs? It has a three, it covered a three inch circle, about 1.2 degrees of field. So you've got two mirrors and a corrector system near the focus? Yes. And one of the features I wanted in this telescope was to make it a one man portable telescope because a lot of times I go in the field to start parties and I don't want to have to cart three or four other guys around to help me put the scope up. So this scope comes apart in two pieces. Each piece is quite portable. It's very lightweight. And I can personally put it together. Where does it break apart? It breaks apart right here. So the, the upper and lower truss assembly the, separate? Yes, the top half is 22 pounds. 22. And it lifts off. The bottom half is 44 pounds. With the optics. With the optics. All right. Now that's a lightweight primary by the looks of it. That is a very lightweight primary. It weighs 11 pounds. It was specially machined for us. The material is? It's fused quartz. Fused quartz. The secondary as secondary well? Secondary also, yes. I noticed it's all an open tube structure here. Is that just for demonstration at the show so people can see it? Or are you intended to have it used that way? Well, it is one advantage to show at the, at the show when they can see the mirror. Uh, but the reason I have it open like that is because I want to eliminate tube currents as a problem when I'm testing. So in my observatory, this is how I use it. All open? All open, yes. So I, I no tube quite current. a few perforations in the baffle. Yes, we, we want to let the wind go through, through the scope and even through the baffle. So if you're a more light polluted environment, you could use it with light shrouds around it? Yes, absolutely. The scope will come with a shroud at the bottom. And if you want to put a cloth shroud over the top, you can do that also. All right. We can add uh, dew remover, electronics, anything a person wants. All right. So you can build it up the way you want. This is the largest aperture that astrophysics has ever offered. That's correct. Up to now, I've been limited to about 12 inches. So now we're stepping up to 17. So this is the latest version of the 1600 mount, and you've got some new features in this now. Yes, the mount itself hasn't changed. The gearing and the axes and everything are the same as they have been. The thing that has changed is the gearbox. This is a brand new gearbox, new design, fully automatic, spring-loaded, uh, warm mesh system. So you can disengage it to swing the telescope free and balance it? Yes, How I can disengage it. By this lever, this lever unlocks the axis. Now you can swing the scope for balance. I notice you've got the cover off the side of the gearbox here. It looks like you're trying to demonstrate something. 
Yes, what I'd like to demonstrate is the action of our absolute encoders. This particular mount has an option for a Renishaw high resolution absolute encoders. What you see here is the pickup and that little blue light tells you that the absolute encoder is working and ready to go. Now, not only does it control the position of the mount for as you try to add, uh, as you try to add, um, auto guide, but it also pushes back if the mount if the scope is being pushed by the wind, it actually pushes back to try to keep that shaft exactly in position. So you can see, as a, if the wind were trying to push the telescope, yeah. it's actually responding to that and trying yes. to put the telescope back where it belongs. So we have a dynamic loop that goes from the encoder to our controller back to the motor and controls the motor position. So these are absolute encoders. And they have a number of advantages. Yes, each axis on this particular mount has uh, one Renishaw high resolution absolute encoder ring and a pickup, and they're accurate to uh, under one-tenth arc second. And what about you can't get lost? An absolute encoder always knows the position angle because each point on the encoder has a unique signature. So all you have to do is read it. So there's no homing sensor needed. It has its own built-in homing sensor. Every position has a unique angle. So if you know the exact universal time and you add the angle to it, you get your right ascension. And declamation, of course, is not time dependent. So it always knows where declamation is. So the scope's never going to get lost in the sky. If it is lost because of a user error, then all you have to do is press home. And the absolute encoder takes over and sends the mount to a home position and then recalibrates the mount. From there, you can go back to your imaging. Nice feature. Now you've also got some new aspects of the control as well. So we've developed a new control system with uh, new microprocessors. And let me show you that. It's on this side okay. of the mount. This is our new baby called the CP4. It has the latest electronics, the latest microprocessor, lots of storage. So we can do all kinds of things. Now, the CP4 has its own internet address. It has an ethernet connection, so you can connect this to the web, either peer-to-peer -peer or in a network, and you can upgrade this mount with new software over the internet from Astrophysics Direct, and we can, uh, we can check it out for you, see if everything's working okay. You can troubleshoot it? Yes, there are certain diagnostics that we can do over the net. That's great. So these electronics are just for this new mount. Not really. This CP4 can be used for all the mounts we've ever made that have servo motors. That goes all the way back to our 600 mount, even the 400 mount. That it, really? It, yes. So I could put this on a Mach 1, an older Mach 1, and it would put all the new features available in the Mach 1. Exactly. All we have to do is change the personality inside the CP4, and you switch this out with the, uh, the old CP3, CP2. CP1. Compatible with the old hand box and everything? Yes, it's compatible with our keypad. It, it still has the serial port inputs, it still, it, it, but it now has USB also and Wi-Fi. Ah. So you can talk to your mount <laughs> and, and say hello. <laughs> One of the features of this new control box is that it's called Safety Slew. So a lot of amateurs like to have their telescopes upside down to start a long imaging session past the meridian. If for some reason the deck axis is positioned in such a way that if it moves first, it might hit the pier. But the safety slew in here prevents that because it will not move the deck axis at all until the scope is cleared of the mount. So it will slew only the RA axis until the scope is clear, and then it moves to the deck axis. All right. Well, that's another a feature we should mention about the mounts. Your mounts swing completely around. They don't stop at the meridian. So if you have a configuration that allows you to track beyond the meridian, you can do that with these scopes. Exactly. The, a lot of amateurs like to image across the meridian because that's the best point. They don't yeah. want to switch around at that point. So they start the 
scope actually upside down. And then they go for two, three, four hours and then pass the meridian all the way to, till dawn. Roland, I want to thank you very much for telling me about your telescope in the mount today. Thank you. All right. If viewers want more information about any of this equipment, there's a lot of technical details about the telescopes, the mounts, and the software that can be used with them, they can go to the Astrophysics website, www.astro-physics.com. I'm Dennis DiCicco for Sky and Telescope Magazine here at the 2016 MIF.